we don't quite have the life experience to talk about it yet. Yeah, well, um, as, I, as I forewarned, category theory is not light reading. It's, yeah, it's out there. That's, that's a good way of putting it. It's like, it's out there, man. It's out there. OK, is, is my uh, mic working? La, 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 la. Yada, yada. All right, I, I'll begin with a word of prayer. Dearly Father, we uh, thank you for this day, for the rain, and for these students. Just help us to glorify you when we do this day, Lord. In the name I pray. Amen. OK, so homo homotopy. Today we do homotopy. So this is section, and, and I'm just skipping right past the groups because you guys know what groups are. You'll learn. So um, I'll, I'll say more about a group when we get there, okay? Um, so let's talk about homotopic, homotopic paths. So this is section, um, you know, section two and chapter three of um, Gamelin, page, uh, you know, 112. And so what this section is about is describing, um, so sometimes in calculus three, we'll talk about deforming one path into another. Think about taking like a loop and deforming it into another loop or something like that. This is essentially the mathematics behind that, to make it careful, all right? So this, this, this section is a series of little lemmas and, and theorems. We're just going to try to hack our way through it, all right? Um, first of all, the definition. And I'll try to stick to his, his notation as closely as I can. Um, exotopological space, all right? And... Um, points A and B and X, then you know gamma, um, gamma from 0, 1 to X such that gamma of 0 is equal to A and gamma of 1 equals to B. Gamma continuous is a what? This is a path, right, from A to B. Initial point, terminal point. Okay? And so then this is, I mean, I, I haven't, this is, an, I mean, I, that is a definition, but this is more of a reminder at the moment. Definition down here. <laughs> um, Two paths, gamma 0 and gamma 1, um, from A to B. Um, are homotopic with fixed endpoints. Um, which is denoted ah, stupid. Which is denoted here's the notation we're going to use for it. And I haven't seen this elsewhere, but you know, fine, I'm, I'm going to stick with it because I'm sure there's a reason that he's using this notation that will become more clear later on. I haven't yet gotten to the point in the book where I can see why he's doing this, but it's fine. Rel, I think, actually, I may already know. It may be to distinguish this notion of homotopy from a later notion of homotopy, which has more to do with circles, which he only reveals at the end of the section, maybe the next section, actually. Um, anyway, let's not worry about that at the moment. So this says gamma 0 is homotopic to gamma 1 relative, um, you know, relative to the 0, 1 setup. We're just going to say gamma 0 is homotopic to gamma 1, all right? Um, 
if there exists a continuous map f. I don't think he even says continuous, but it should be understood that this is supposed to be a continuous map. Um, 0, 1, cross 0, 1 to x such that it is really raining, isn't it? And here's the deal. F of S0 is gamma sub 0 of S. F of S1 is gamma 1 of S. F of 0 T is A. F of 1 T is equal to B. The map F is called the homotopy. of gamma 0 and gamma 1. So this is the homotopy math map. Furthermore, furthermore, a little bit more notation here, guys. Um, gamma sub t of s is, by definition, the homotopy at f of st. Um, so basically we're saying f, gamma sub t is a mapping. In fact, it's a path from 0, 1 to x for each, you know, 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1, right? And this is what for 0 less than or equal to s less than or equal to 1. I think this picture is actually very helpful. So let's see here. This point is A. This point is B. All right. And F is going from here to here. So Basically, if we go from the top, I'll use some color coding. Like this top one maps to up here. That's gamma 1. And um, this down here. Maps to the lower, which is gamma, gamma 2, gamma 0 rather, right? The square, if, if, I, I'm, if I'm looking at the square over here, the typical point is what? It's like what? It's, it's st, right? So when we have the red line is what? t equals to 0, right? The purple is t equals to 1. So we're saying that when you restrict f to the bottom and you let you know um, s vary, right? Typical point here would be like what? what s comma 0 that goes over to some point over here, like gamma sub 0 of s. And on the other hand, for that same s up here, we have s comma 1, which would correspond to like, I don't know, one of these, right? Gamma 1 of s. But then, <clears throat> if you just fix fix t, put t equal to anything in between these, it gives you another path, 
right? Like, say this one, right? And that would be somewhere in, in between, right? And again, there'd be this middle point that would be um, gamma P of S. And so the idea is we can deform gamma 0 to gamma 1, passing it through all these intermediate, inter intermediate paths, right? And um, continuity of F makes sure that, that, that that's done in a responsible way. All right. The idea is really more that we're deforming the curve gamma 0 up into gamma 1. The square is really just a, um, a bookkeeping device to make that happen. This does not have to be really a two-dimensional picture. You know, we could, I mean, maybe there is, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to say that, it's, that there's like a plane in which it, 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 it it resides. I don't think we have that kind of geometry in what's going on here necessarily. Because this, this could be a pair of paths in somewhat, some kind of rather exotic topological space where I really shouldn't try to visualize it as a two-dimensional plane inside that. Although I will freely admit almost anything I can think of, it makes sense to visualize a two-dimensional plane in which the, the deformation is like happening. But I suppose it doesn't have to happen, I mean, that's the thing, is if this is going on in, in, you know, like in three dimensions, right? If you're talking about, you know, a deformation between a point here and here, like you've got one path like this, right? And you've got another path like that. The deformation could take paths that are going any kind of different which ways in the three dimensions. Like it doesn't have to fit in a plane. It can be all, all out there. At the moment, yeah. One thing at a time. We'll just talk about deformations of paths just to start with. That that'll keep us busy for a while. Ah, uh, yeah. Fair, fair enough. Yes. Also, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. So his picture is that this is essentially A, and this essentially gets mapped to B. You know, like that. That's that's these two conditions. F of zero t is is a. F of one t is b. That that's what it takes to find a homotopy between two paths. And so he immediately gives us a theorem that constructs a non-trivial homotopy in what's called a convex. We talked about convex before, right? What was convex? Oh, <laughs> we actually haven't talked about convex in here. I'm thinking about abstract algebra two, or we talked about convex. What's what's a convex set in here? with endpoints fixed. So what convex means? A subset of Rn is convex if you, if you take any two points, all right, any two points in that convex set, and the line segment connecting the two points is again in the set. This is convex. 
So, um, you know, you can talk about like the convex hull. Given a finite set of points, what's the smallest set which is a convex set which contains that set of points? For example, is a fun thing you can do with convex. Like, so if I give you guys like these three points and say find the convex hull of these three points, what is it? What's that? It is the triangle, indeed. I can't get anything past you guys. Let's see here. So, yeah, that's the smallest convex set which contains those three points and all line segments between them. So it's an interesting idea. It's an extension of span. Well, it's a, is it an extension? It's, it's, a, it's a kind of twist on the concept of span from linear algebra. We don't allow arbitrary linear combinations. We have to allow kind of limited linear transformation in a particular way. Um, you can define this in terms of a formula, yeah. And, um, you know, you could do things like build polyotopes in this way, in terms of convex hulls of finite sets of points, which would appear as the vertices of the polytopes. Sure. We should come back to this later, yeah. Uh, they are related. Um, certainly, star sh well, convex is star-shaped, but star-shaped is not convex, necessarily. So. Yeah, star shape means that there is a star center for the set, such that from that star center, you can get to any point in the set by line segments from the star center. Yeah, you, you need at least, at least, there has to exist at least one star center um, for it to be a star. In what? In con oh, in convex, every point is a star center. Yes, very good, very good. Yeah. Okay, so what's the proof of this? You take a point A, right? Take a point B, whatever. This is just a heuristic for the proof, all right? And um, so here's my... My, my gamma, gamma one, here's my gamma two. I keep doing gamma two, what's wrong with me? I can't count. Zero, one, right? And the thing is, really, you wanna figure out a way to connect, say gamma zero of, of S to gamma one of S, right? And the simple thing to do is just to make a line from there to there. So its point in the middle would be gamma t of s. So if you do that, what's the formula for gamma t of s? T times gamma 1 of S minus gamma 0 of S. I think that'll work. So that the gamma 1 of S minus gamma 0 of S gives me this direction vector, right? And when we plug in T equal to 0, we get gamma, we get gamma 0 of S. And when we plug in T equals to 1, we get gamma 1 of S. We know that this is an element of x again. Why? Because x is convex. So these two points are connected by a line segment. And um, yeah, that actually defines the homotopy. So just let f of st equal to gamma ts as defined above. You know, this is continuous. It's continuous and it satisfies the four axioms that we need, right? Because if you plug in, you know, you, ch you go run through it. S0 is gamma 0. S1 is gamma 1 of S. How about 0t, f of 0t? 
Let's check that. F of 0 t, what's that give us? Oh, s is equal to 0, right? So gamma 0 of 0 plus what? Plus t times what? Gamma 1 of 0 minus gamma 0 of 0. What's that work out to? I sure hope it works out to A. Yeah, this, <laughs> here you're looking at A minus A, right? So good news, the T goes away. Whew, that's a relief, right? Because we don't want a T here, we just want A. And that is, in fact, what we get, because that's A. And likewise, F of 1T is equal to B through a very similar calculation. Because the given paths terminate at b, and the t cancels out because b minus b is 0. So this is, in fact, a homotopy between these two paths, gamma 0 and gamma 1, in a convex set. Does that make sense? Now, it's not always so easy to, like, just write down the homotopy, right? Like, this is, this is precious and rare and wonderful that you can just do this. You know, like trying to write an explicit homotopy between paths in a general space is like, I think that's a hard, hard problem, you know. Sometimes you can draw pictures to sort of express the idea. Um, and sometimes that's all we do in Calculus 3, right? In fact, that's all we do in Calculus 3. We don't introduce the technical notion of a homotopy, right? At no point in Calculus 3, I'm like, imagine a function of two variables such that, uh, you know, this setup. This is what we have to do to define homotopy carefully. Two hours later, we'll get to the concept of what simply connected means from a technical perspective. Said no calculus three professor anywhere. Well, I don't know. That's where we're going. We're going to give a careful definition of simply connected. It takes a little bit to get there, though. Okay. So that's one down. Uh oh. Time for. Time for a quiz. No. So I, so Liam, Liam was missing from, from abstract. You, know, you guys know Liam? Yeah. You know Liam. So he was missing from abstract the first, uh, first hour. So I top hatted like six times. Oh, yeah. He had a legitimate reason to be missing. We just were messing with him. Yeah, that, that, that'll happen. You picked the wrong day to find me, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. Um, we should talk about that after class. <laughs> I was thinking about that, actually. But anyway, the relation. Um, gamma. Equivalent to alpha rel 0, 1 is an equivalence relation equivalence relation on the set of paths in X from A to B. So what does that mean, that this is an equivalence relation? It satisfies the three properties of an equivalent, which means we got to check what? Reflexivity. So all right, you guys tell me. So let's work it out. How, uh, you tell me, why is, you know, why is gamma why is gamma reflexive to gamma? Can you tell me the homotopy between a path and itself? Oh, F. It is, you know, it's kind of funny that we don't use H for homotopy here, isn't it? 
there's probably, I think it, the reason, the reason, why is the reason for not doing that, you know? Yeah, because H is used for homology group layer. That's right. Um, so, okay, what is, what is F? So you guys tell me, what, what should I make F of ST here? I want gamma 0 to be gamma, and I want gamma 1 to be gamma. I want all my gammas to be gamma. Seems like I should just say f of st equals to uh, gamma of s, right? Is that continuous? Well, yes, because we've assumed that it's a continuous path, and doing nothing with t is continuous, right? I mean, it's kind of stupid, but that's continuous. And um, I think it satisfies the necessary axioms, right? Like, we have f of s0 is gamma of s. We have f of s1 is gamma of s. We have f of 0t. And f of 1t is what? Therefore, f is a homotopy of gamma to itself, consequently reflexive, thus. Well, that one was, that one was easy enough I could think about it today. That's, that's saying something. Now, how, how are you going to do symmetric? I mean, suppose gamma 0 is is I keep trying to add another <laughs> I keep <laughs> it's like the fifth time I've done that so far in the past 10 minutes um, so gamma 0 equivalent to gamma 1 we'd like to show rel the question is why does that imply right that gamma 1 is gamma equivalent to gamma 0 relative to 0 1 How can we, so what, what do we have to work with? Right, so we should let f um, from 0, 1 squared to x be homotopy um, proving gamma 0, gamma 1. Or you could say the homotopy of gamma zero. I mean, anyway, so that, right? And then we can let 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 g of s t equal to what? I need yeah. I need to reverse. Reverse the reverse what? Reverse t. How do we reverse t? Trade t for one minus t, right? Then that will be continuous because it's the composite of continuous maps, and it will satisfy what? I mean, you can run through it, right? So f of, what we got, f of s0, excuse me, g of s0, I should say. What is g? g of s0 is what? That would be f of s1, right? Which is what? Gamma 1 of s, right? g of s1 would be f of s0, which is gamma 0 of s g of 0 t would be what? f 
f of, what is it, 0, 1 minus t, which is what? It's what? So this is still equal to a since 1 minus t is an element of 0, 1, right? And likewise, g, <laughs> goat, of um, 1 t is f of 1, 1 minus t, right? Which by the same jibber-jabber is b. So this g is a homotopy of gamma 1 being equivalent to gamma 0. Therefore, so this proves, we can erase the uh, question mark, right? I mean, we've proved. I'll leave the question mark fine. Therefore, gamma 1, did it again. Gamma 1 is equivalent to gamma 0 relative 0, 1 with n point fixed, right? One other thing left, right? <laughs> So if gamma 0 is equivalent to gamma 1 and gamma 1 is equivalent, homotopic rather, I should say, to gamma 2, what do we want to do? Say again? All right, and um, so we got to somehow merge, you know, suppose we have f, <laughs> excuse me, f of yowzers, yowzers, where is he, um, oh. f, gamma zero to gamma one, yeah, and G supporting that gamma 1 is homotopic to gamma 2 with fixed endpoints. We would like to build H of ST, right, to be a homotopy of gamma 0 to gamma 2 with fixed endpoints, right? So I guess, the, I mean, here's a picture, A, B, and so here's my gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, right? We can somehow get from gamma 0 to deform to gamma 1 by f, and then we can deform from gamma 1 to gamma 2 by, by g. For h, for h, right, we want to let, we want, we want, we want, I mean, one thing we could do would think about this being, what did I, I forgot my, my lingo already. I want t equals to 0 to be here, right? And I want t equals to 1 to be up here. But a lazy cho I mean, what else are you going to do? There's many choices, but if we make t equals to half in the middle as a point of construction, that, that should be successful, right? So how do I manipulate the um, yeah 
maybe I should, I should case-wise define this, yeah? So let's say f of what? f of s comma 2t. All right, for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1 half. And for any s, right? And then what we do, we do g of s comma what? One minus two t. I think yeah, I think two t. What we're going to have one half less than or equal to t less than or equal to one to work with here, right? So two yeah, two t minus one is what we want because we're not we're not trying to reverse the um, we're not trying to reverse the progression of the deformation, right? We're still like deforming t is the, the deformation from gamma zero to gamma one as t increases is like kind of going like that and then it, I mean so I think if you run through it oh is that what's in the book uh, yeah. oh good um, it's not usually the case I can close the book and just do stuff in here, right? This is a relatively simple construction. <laughs> That's my point um, that I couldn't do on my topology test, which I got a B on. Sadness. Still remember, all these years later, I could not do the, con this is the thing I got stuck on in the test. I couldn't, I couldn't do the, if I remember right, I couldn't do the transitivity. I, I got that, I think I did that, but this I could, I got stuck on. Um, anyway. Ah, yes, and the continuity here, if you don't have technology, is really quite a bear, right? But the thing is, we have continuous map, we have continuous map, and by the, the, the gluing lemma that I talked about, I talked about, right? I didn't prove it, but I talked about it. That counts. Um, <laughs> sorry. If you look at t equals to a half, these, of course, agree because they both reduce to gamma 1. Um, um, they reduce to gamma 1 of s, right? Like h of s comma 1 half is unambiguously gamma 1 of s. Right? And so the, the, the gluing lemma, or sometimes called the pasting lemma, will give you continuity of because we have continuity in each case and they're meeting at a closed set, right? The place where these cases glue together is a closed set in the intersection of the cases, yeah. The closed set is, um, I, I think it's one half cross zero one, yeah? That's where the cases glue together. I think that's closed. They do what? They, they cover the whole space. Okay, okay. Right. Oh, so burying the lead. So therefore, we have that um, gamma zero is equivalent to gamma two. I mean, you can you got to run through the axioms, right? We should check that h of what? h of zero t gives us what? It's supposed to give us a, and so if we put in here f of 0, 2t, that gives us a by construction of f. You put in g of 0, 2t minus 1, that also gives us a by construction of g because it's a homotopy from a to b. And likewise, when we plug in h of 1t, again, this is b and that's b because these are respectively homotopies with terminal points b. Um, great. So, in fact, yes, uh, homotopy... Um, is an equivalence relation on the set of paths from A to B. So once we have equivalence, once we have something that's equivalence relation, what do we do? We start thinking about the equivalence classes, right? So definition. 
<clears throat> come on, come on. Definition. Equivalence. Classes. Of paths. From A to B. In X. Um, with respect to our homotopy homotopy classes of paths here's the notation gamma 0 is equal to gamma 1 such that gamma 1 is homotopic to gamma 0 relative endpoints fixed, yeah? Or what he says, aka the equivalence class, <laughs> the equivalence class, the homotopy class of gamma naught is equal to the homotopy class of gamma 1 if and only if gamma 0 and gamma 1 are homotopic with fixed endpoints A and B. Okay. <clears throat> Lemma. 2.3. Let gamma be a path from A to B. All right. And let rho be any map from 0, 1 to 0, 1 such that rho of 0 is 0 and rho of 1 is 1. All right. In other words, rho is a reparameterization. All right. It's a, it's, it's, it's a reparameterization of zero one. That's what that is. Then, um, well, I mean, the reparameterization is really this. Um, then here's the here's the punchline here. The equivalence class of gamma composed with rho is equal to the homotopy class of gamma. So what's this say? This says that if you have a homotopy class and you have a representative of it, if you reparameterize the representative any which way you like, like this row, you still have the same homotopy class. And the proof is really just the following formula, all right, which I'll write since King left us. Um, <laughs> I was going to skip it, but since he's left us, I'm going to cover it. Um, gamma T of S is equal to gamma of 1 minus T times S plus T times rho of S. He says that's a homotopy of gamma to gamma composed with rho. He says, this homotopy is precisely the composition of gamma and the homotopy alpha T of S Well, he, he, he's explaining where this formula came from. Let me just forget about that for a second and just, just let's just, does this make sense? 
that that's a homo, is this a homotopy of, um, So allegedly, I can think of this as being f of, you know, st, right? What's what's f of f of s zero is what? If I plug in t equal to zero, I get what? I get the row goes away. Right, and we just yeah we just gamma of s, which is what we want. If I plug in one s one, what happens? Then the then the s goes away, and the row s survives. So we get gamma of row of s, aka gamma composed with row of s. That is also what we want, right? All that remains is to check the fixed endpoints condition on the homotopy, right? So if we look at f of um, 0 t, what do we get? And if we look at f of 1 t, what do we get? Plug in s equal to 0. Row s is row 0, which is 0. s equal to 0 makes this go away. So we're just left with gamma of 0, which is, by assumption, a. Right? I didn't, I mean, well, path from a to b. I'm still assuming gamma is a path from a to b. And if you plug in s equal to 1, we get row of 1 is 1. Right? S equal to 1, so I get 1 minus t plus t. t and minus t cancel when we look at s equal to 1. And so we're left with gamma of 1, which is b. So there you go. This is the proof of lemma 2.3. I'm not going to prove all the lemmas. <laughs> I need to stop. Ah! Well, you guys will remember the equivalence relation one, right? At some point, I need to stop erasing these lemmas because they're going to become important in what follows. <clears throat> okay, so actually up next is a definition. Definition. Um, let A, B, C be elements in the topological space X and so we've got A, we've got B, all right? And we've got C. I'll draw a picture of it, all right? And he wants alpha alpha to be a path from A to B. All right? Alpha is a path from A to B. Alpha is a path from A to B. You didn't miss anything. We just proved that. Um, this is much more important what I'm doing at the moment, actually. So alpha is a path from A to B, and Beta is a path from B to C. All right. Then we would like to define alpha beta is path from A to C. Right. So if we join these paths together, we get a, you know, we can glue the paths together. How do we do that, though? Like, what's the specific definition of them? See, because 
we're insisting on using the domain being 0 to 1. All right, so that forces us to write the following. Alpha beta of s equals to alpha of 2s beta of 2s minus 1. All right, so this is the uh, where was it? This is the alpha alpha beta is obtained by first running alpha at double speed and then running beta at double speed. So lemma two point four. It says the following. Well, I'll. I'm going to take a break here, actually, if you guys don't mind.